Hey everybody, welcome back to another Python tutorial. I'm Rudy the Null, and I'm bringing you the threading module. And uh, in the last video, things got a little hectic. You know, threads were dying left and right. Some people were coming back to life. Some were alive, some weren't. And uh, now I want to have a little bit of a breather for our brain. And so this is going to be a pretty simple video. What I want to show you guys is a really easy function and uh, a pretty simple variable, or just a little, just a little keyword flag that'll uh, change some things for us. I want to show you the is alive function and the name argument or keyword. So the is alive function. If I go ahead and uh, I'll run this code, clear out the screen. This is our thread. There are two active threads running. There's the main thread and our thread over here. And the main thread is the current thread. Hit enter to die. Once we hit enter, okay, finally, our other thread stops running. We don't need to worry about this current thread over here, but what if we wanted to say, what if we wanted to print out our thread is alive, right? So let's run this. Our thread is alive. Duh. It's still running. It hasn't been dead yet. It isn't. It hasn't died. There are two active counts, and there uh, we see in the enumerate function. There's our regular thread and the thread that we're running. So yes, obviously our function, our thread is alive. Once we die, we get a pretty huge number for x. What if we went over and checked one more time? Is our thread still alive? We just set dead to true. So once I hit enter, it's still true. What the heck? What the heck's going on? Okay. Do you think that's because this function, this thread, had ended only after we printed this out? Or did this print out before this ended? Those are really the same question. But can we keep running this program and trying to find a scenario where it will be false? I'm not seeing it so much, but what if we, what if we waited? What if I hit raw input? The thread has died. Wait a bit and hit enter. Enter again. Now we'll test whether it's alive, and if we run this, hit enter to die, the thread has died. Wait a bit, hit enter again. There's the x value that just got spewed out onto the screen, and if I hit enter, false. The thread is dead. Do you guys see what's going on here? We're having the same problem that we had before when one thread closes before another one can see some sort of information or one thread sort of finishes before the other one thread ends. It's a jumbled mess. Sometimes you can't have the same information be going back and forth between two different threads because it'll get a little hectic. But that's besides the point right now. What you want to wor worry about and focus is the is alive function. <laughs> that's all that I wanted to show you in this video other than the name and... Uh, our thread is alive. And then later, our thread is dead because we told it to die. <laughs> All it refers to is whether or not the thread is running. Once that thread is not alive, if we go ahead and check out the active count and the enumerate function, you know what's going to happen, right? This is our thread. We just killed it. Now we check this out. There's only one active thread, and it's the main thread. Cool. Are you guys starting to see this sort of like piece together? Are you starting to see it? Now I want to show you guys name. And name is just a name for your thread. Our thread, when we call this object, when we create the object, we can pass in as another argument. Name can equal our thread or anything. We can set it to be a string that can be anything. Now when I run this, check it out. This is our thread, there are two active counts, blah, 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 blah. In the enumerate function, we see that same name over here. Thread, and the object name, our thread. Now, what was it before? It was, it was thread minus one, right? So that's an interesting thing. If you don't set up name, if you don't have a specific name dash one, okay, my processor's freaking out, I'm going to have to kill this. If you don't have a specific thread name, if you don't supply one, the default is going to be thread-n. And n 
is a variable or a number, hence n, referring to the current thread that you just created. It could be thread 1, it could be thread 2, it could be whatever is the current thing that you're on, right? The current number of threads that you have created so far. Okay, so we had it earlier be our thread. And it can be anything. It could be fish. Our thread fish. And there it is. So just a way to keep track of your threads, just a way that you as the programmer know what's happening and know what's going on. You can name your threads and test whether or not they're alive. Are they dead? Have we killed them? That sort of thing. It's all part of multitasking. It's all part of simultaneous code running. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.